Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazaeus here from The Automator, and in this video, we're going to show you how to avoid a coming disaster, and I'm talking disaster, so maybe I'm exaggerating <laughs> a little, but uh, stick around to the end because you, I really think everyone at this point in time should use this cool tool we wrote. We kind of came upon it of we were discussing something and realizing, wait a minute, we, we should use this, and not only should we use it, but basically almost everybody out there right now should use this cool tool. So what, uh, what are we talking about, Isaiah? particular disaster is the fact that at some point, and it seems to be that it's approaching faster and faster, AutoHotKey version 2 is going to be the main version of AutoHotKey. It has some cool features about detecting whether your script is version 1 or not and running accordingly. Uh, but uh, as you experienced yourself, sometimes it is really slow when it's detecting that. And one of the ways that it has to detect whether it's version 1 or version 2 is with the new uh, directive, it's not really that new, but it's there, is the requires directive, which allow it, it you can put at the top of your script a requirement. It requires version one of AutoHotKey, and if AutoHotKey version two sees that, it knows which version to launch automatically. That's what happens. Now, so let, let me ask a question here to everyone on here. Comment in here, one, if you've started using version two. Um, yeah. And the odds are you haven't, right? Or you've maybe played slightly with it. Like me, um, you know, Isaiah's worked with it a lot. I've played with it a little, a couple of my scripts are. This is why it's so critical because if you haven't really done a lot with V2, this tool, you want to add this requires to all of your scripts, right? Yes, Before right. you have an inter intermixing of the two, which would make it really terrible to try to go back and do. Right. So mainly one of the issues is that if the script is not for version two and you don't have any requirement or anything, when you try to run it, it's going to give you an error. It's going to say like, you know, cannot execute line, whatever. And you're going to think that there is something wrong with the script and you might start debugging something that you cannot really debug. Now, if you add the requirement, what happens is that when you try to run the script, it's going to tell you this script requires out of hotkey version one. So it, it will automatically uh, remove the need for debug. So what we created was a little tool, and it is a very simple tool that goes ahead and scans a lot of, you, you give it a folder. So you, you're going to use, uh, select a path that you're going to search. Probably is going to be a path to any place where you have a bunch of script. And in our case, we have a lot of scripts going on in there, right? And I, we didn't want to do this manually. So you're going to give it a path to a folder. It, which contains many AHK files. And it will skip any file that contains this line here and will append either at the beginning of the file or if you remove that at the end of the file, you can choose where to append, um, whatever line you want to add. So we defaulted to this, but you can switch this to whatever you want. Basically this script, if you're looking for all the files that contain the word GUI, and you want to append at the end and a GUI control, a GUI close, close exit or something, whatever you want, you can just do so. Just go ahead and append something to all files. But in our case, what we're going to do is that I'm just going to add the requirement for version 1.1.33 or more. That's it. Once you do this, now let me show you here. This particular file does not have the requirement, but I know that this must be run with AutoHotKey version one because GUIs in AutoHotKey version two look way different. So what I want my script is to go through all the folders and checks if it has it. If it doesn't have it, then append it at the beginning. That's what it does. So as soon as I click OK, it will check this, the files. And depending on the amount of files that you might have, it might be faster or slower, but in our case, I think uh, now that I'm sharing my screen, it's a little bit slower. When I was showing you this a little bit earlier, it was a little bit faster, but in the end, it just, um, it was 2000 something files skipped because I already ran the, the script on those files and only one fixed. And I see if you can tell now here at the top of my script, I have my requirement. So. so yeah. What I was going to say was one thing that might confuse people, because for me, this was it, like, well, wait a minute, version two is greater than version 1.1.33. However, it stays within silos on that first thing. Right. right? So, so it is just going to, everything that is up in this particular section, if this number right here changes to two, then that doesn't, that doesn't actually fit the 
the description. So yes, this plus here is just within that particular right. uh, version point, right? And you're you're saying that just because Auto Hockey One is kind of weird, but that V1 makes you think it, it would say V2 there. But it's mm -hmm. it's really when you say requires, it's still requiring version one at this level. Not yes. you know version two wouldn't say like, well, I have version two, I'll run it in there. No, that it doesn't. No, work that it, it is always on the. So if you only put V1 here, yeah, if you change to V2, it would actually try to work on that one too. Because but I'm actually specifying within this level also must be one with this within this level must be at least 33 or more right. but it is regarding that level everything else should stay exactly the same and we I have a video on semantic versioning if you haven't yes. you know, gone through that it's a really right. good thing now the other thing after depending on if you have worked with version two right you could identify the path to your files where version two is and do the same thing to say add yeah. the requires version two because yes, exactly. you want to get this in there. And then of course, build it into your default template, which I have a video out there somewhere showing how to set your default auto hotkey script, right? Because you yeah. probably want to have that in there. Yeah, that is right. So in general, I think uh, right now, the script is really simple. Again, as I mentioned, it, it does uh, uh, allow you to do, it is a little bit flexible. But later on, maybe we would add a, a little bit more features like selecting what kind of files you want to loop over because right now it just defaults to AHK files. But in, in general, it, it does the job. It, it makes it very quick. You don't have to spend much time. Just select the folder where all your V1 scripts are and you're good to go. Yeah, so um, to finish this off, you can uh you can get i had the url over me here earlier i'll try to remember to put it up again uh the to get this ad required script that we created but also if you are interested in the v1 to v2 there's a pretty decent converter out there unless your script has really complicated guis or maybe just a gui at all right because it gets very complicated um, you mm -hmm. can take a look at that url over me here the other thing i'd love to hear from you is when do you think, if you're going to guess, when do you think version two is going to be the default official version for AutoHotKey? Because that's right, <laughs> it's coming, you know. And, and I think Zayas and I were talking. We're like, it might be sooner than you think. Um, yeah, but, you know, actually, remember, it. it was in alpha stage for ten years, right? Yeah. Um, but then now it switched to beta, and he has been making a lot of updates as of recent. Now we're in beta seven, so he has made seven. Uh, different changes, ma major commits to the to the beta version. So it looks like he's really working on that. And uh, at some point, it looks like it's gonna be say he's gonna say like, "Hey, uh, this, is, this is this yeah, is let, let's go ahead and put this thing out there." And uh, he might he has been working a lot on trying to make it so that if you're still working version one like your .hk extensions doesn't need to be switched to another right. extension. Yeah. But that is something that then will create a few little problems that just adding the requirement out here will solve that for you because it automatically will detect it and say like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> and if you're ever sharing your code on the forum or Reddit or wherever, right? Like have that in there. We, and we've been bad about it. We haven't been necessarily doing I think when we do version two, we have it in there. But with the version one stuff, we weren't adding it. Well, we were bad at it because now I created a tool that has it on right. all of them. So, so. Yeah. And we get to go back and update all of our downloads to have it in there, right? Because right, yeah. it, it's going to be, and I, I was learning Python when they were switching between version two and version three. And it was so painful in that community and so confusing. Now there, theirs didn't even break that much between the two, but it still was problematic. Now ours, there's going to be a lot of changes. Yeah, there's a lot of things that yeah. do not work, not even similarly. Yeah. So um, yeah, just, just to mention one, you see this comma that you put right next to your command, like message <laughs> box comma, yeah, okay. Right, yeah. That, that just that one that, right. that, that, that one little right. detail is gonna make it so that it doesn't work as right. you expect. So, we, uh, yeah. We do have a lot of videos and webinars on version two, which you can get to the, at the URL over my head here. But also, if you liked this video, please actually like the video. It really helps us out and get more views. Um, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Appreciate it. There you go. Cheers, bye. bye.